I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's word to you. Now, remember, the Lord told us that on a daily basis, we should demand for our daily bread. So are you ready to do that right now? Say this with me. Say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. A miracle is going to happen in your life today. Expect it, believe it, and with joy receive it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I know we're in the last week of the month of July. And let me tell you this truth. Every plan that God has for the month of July, it's coming to you. Everything that God has set for you, every, every blessing, every instruction, everything that God planned and that has been written concerning you for this month of July, I declare right now in the name of the Lord Jesus, it is coming to you freely in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we have been talking about things that um, pertain to salvation or things that concern salvation and we are dwelling on the aspect of jesus talking to us as the branch and he is the vine and we've been dwelling on the fact that we are saved to produce fruit now if you don't understand this truth you will not know the roadmap to your life as a saved person. You will not know that, you know, sometimes they say, oh, we are living for Jesus Christ. You don't even understand what it means to live for Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John chapter 15, he says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and ordained you so that you will go and bear fruit. And then he says, and your fruit should remain, meaning, this is the reason I saved you. See, he said, I ordained you to go and bear fruit. And we talked about it last week that when he says bear fruit, he didn't say bear fruits. He said bear fruit. So the fruit is one. So we talk about the fruit of the spirit. And I said, it's not fruits of the spirit. It is the fruit of the spirit. So all those things he have lined as the fruit of the spirit is describing what the fruit of the spirit looks like he is not telling us the different kinds of fruits of the spirit so what's he saying you can't say and uh, the bible said the fruits of the spirit you know that's how we think sometimes so at least find one in a believer no it's not about finding one in a believer all of them must be found in a believer before you can conclude that this is the fruit that the, the, of the Spirit that is at work in this place. If two is in a believer and the rest are not there, you can't really say this is the fruit of the Spirit. I'm telling you the truth. Just like you, you, you test for some things and then you use some reagents and <clears throat> in your testing. Now, there are several things you look out for. There are several before you can establish that this particular thing is there. If you don't find all of them, you can't conclude that this is what it is. That's just the truth with, with, with what we're talking about. So Jesus said, you are my branch. You are the branch connected to the vine. And these things are practical. It's not just something we, we read and then we assume. The word of God is for living. It's not just for knowledge. It is for living. The reason we get the knowledge is that we live it. And when we live it, men will see and testify concerning us that we are like 
Jesus Christ. Praise God. So, now we're going to be taking it a step further today. I want to show you something in Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 and from verse 21. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Matthew 7 from verse 21. Jesus speaking here and he says, hey, Verse 21, Matthew 7. It says, Not everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. I want you to observe what he says here. He says, Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of God who is in heaven. Now, he, the one who is in heaven, who is in charge of the kingdom of heaven, praise God. It, Jesus is not saying that, hey, you won't go to heaven if you don't do the will of the one who is in heaven. Praise God. Yeah, you won't. So, now you find out that, what does he mean by the one who does the will of God? He is simply referring to the one who brings forth the fruit of God. See? So the fruit of the Spirit is the fruit of God. So it's not like it's the fruit of the Spirit, but it's not the fruit of Jesus. Not the fruit. No, the, 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 the Holy Spirit is simply, is simply the reflection of God. The, 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 the Holy Spirit is simply the... He, he brings to us the character of God. He brings to us the, the personality of God. Without the Holy Spirit, we would never no god that's why i said he bears this fruit in us because we don't see the holy spirit as a person and say okay what are the fruits that are in him but we we look at us and we see the fruit that he is producing in us so then we can tell okay that's the holy spirit in that believer because sometimes you you begin to wonder what spirit is one operating <laughs> i praise god i'm telling you the truth there are people you get confused sometimes, you, you, you don't understand. Now you remember, he says, the fruit of the Spirit is one, love. See, the first way you recognize the fruit of the Spirit is the love that you find in that person. Now I'll tell you something about love. Love is not a feeling. Love is a command. We are commanded to love. That's, the, that's one thing people don't understand. And then we'll go this whole theory of there are different kinds of love. No, I don't, I don't know how that lie was told to us in, in, in the primary school or secondary school now. We're lied to that there are different kinds of love. There are no different kinds of love. There is only one love. There is only love is love. If it is love, it is love. If it's not love, it's not love. And then now you, when you understand that, it's either someone loves or he doesn't love. And then there are people who don't even have the capacity to love. Anyone who doesn't have God does not have the capacity to love. They may do some things that look good and nice, but that doesn't mean it is love. You see, love is not a feeling. But when love is in action, you will feel good. Are you getting what I'm saying? So love is a command. Now, he will not command us to love if first of all, he doesn't know that we have the capacity to love. So he commands us to love and is the same love you have for your wife, is the same love you have, I mean, for your spouse, is the same love you have for your children, is the same love you have for your neighbors, is the same love you have for everyone. Love is love. Now, in the display of love, now this is where discipline comes in. Now that is really where you begin to know if it is love Oh, it's not love. Love comes with itself responsibility. That's why you need to understand that it is a command. So when you are commanded to do something, you take on the responsibility when you obey. So you make sure you do it right. So you are commanded to love your spouse. 
men. It's about the men, husbands, love your wife. Now, when he commands you to love your wife, you take on the responsibility of loving your wife. And that comes with a lot of discipline. Now, in loving your spouse, it's not as a result of what she or he has done, but it is you responding to a command from God. Meaning, the day you stop loving, you have started disobeying God. So you don't say, I used to love my wife until she did something very terrible to me. No, sir, you cannot say that. That is not love. You were not loving her. You know, we, we say, ah, man, I used to love that person. Eh? But after he did what he did, every love in me just died. What a lie. <laughs> you know, it's so convenient to talk like that. But is it the truth? You know, you are commanded to do something. And there is a blessing to it. There is nothing God commands you to do that doesn't have a blessing or a reward attached to it. Now, why is there a reward? Because he knows that that thing he has commanded you to do has challenges with it. So a time will come when you will be tested, when you, you will be tempted to stop obeying him. Now, when you realize that this work of love is a command from God and you cannot keep that command by yourself. Now, this is, this is the thing we need to understand. It is God that is at work in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, how does it work? God gives you a command and then you say, yes, sir. When you are saying, yes, sir, you are not thinking with your senses how you are going to do it. Because the truth is, when he commands you to do something, he releases a grace or his spirit into you and that spirit in you begins to work out that thing. Now, your job, when you say, yes, sir, I'm going to do it, you actually say, I'm going to depend or rely on the Holy Spirit to help me do this thing. So when I set myself on that journey, I know I'm not walking by myself. I know I'm, I'm, I'm depending on the oil of the Spirit walking in me to make it smooth. It's smooth, right, for me. So when someone begins to say, ah, hmm, it's not easy, it's not easy to serve God. It's not easy. I wonder what they are talking about. How, how would you say it's not easy? What strength are you using to do it? By what strength do you do the things that you do? He has never required our strength. He supplies the strength. What he requires of us is to yield to the strength that is being produced by the Holy Spirit. Now, this is where a lot of times people get it wrong because they feel, and that's why you can get angry. I remember when I first got married to my wife and you know how uh, we've known ourselves for many years, but you see, the moment you get married, that's a, a different ball game. You see, you know, someone say, ah, we are best of friends. So let's get married. Okay, you get married to the person. The moment you take on that responsibility of marriage is a different ball game. And then suddenly, you know, my wife would do something and then I was like, huh? <laughs> you know? And then I realized something. Now, see, because I, I'm, I've given myself to the Holy Spirit. I've given myself to always walk with Him and, and trust Him in all things. Then I realized that in all these things, there is a consistency that He keeps in me. He keeps a consistency in me. And also on a normal day, you know, you hear, oh, maybe we're planning to do something and then one spouse offends the other and then you go, I I'm not doing that thing again. I'm not going out. Maybe you plan to go out to get something. I'm not going again because I'm angry. You just realize that you can't. You're, not, you're, you're a bit upset now. And then, but then, you know, we're supposed to do this thing. And then, you know, it'll happen. And I'll go to my and say, we're supposed to go out. And like, Okay. <laughs> and in her mind, I'm, I'm upset. So 
forget every other thing we're supposed to do. But I go, I said, I thought we're supposed to go somewhere. Oh, okay, we're still going. Of course, we're still going. Now that's because I am walking in obedience, not by emotions. Now, if you learn to love, especially in the confines of marriage, if you learn to love like that, you realize that it, it's, is it because it's not of him that wills. It is God who shows mercy. Now, what does that mean? It is God who releases the anointing. Praise God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that you begin to understand these things and love like that. Now, I know our time is up. Praise God. So, listen, we're going to continue tomorrow. This is, this is important, what I'm sharing with you. It's very, very important. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.